Howdy there, folks. It's Geist. It's been a while since I've put out any videos, but I've decided to stick with Destiny 2. Today is the first in a series of videos I will be doing on exotic primary reviews. Bungie has made it apparent that they intend to keep sunsetting, and for a lot of players, that's really sucked. And as for me, I've been largely unaffected because I lean on my exotic primaries, and I have since Destiny 1. These videos are designed to share my experience with the exotic primaries and perhaps help you discover your new tool of destruction. Most importantly, one that won't be sunset. So the first exotic primary that we're going to review is Le Monarch. Now, I've been using Le Monarch a pretty heavy amount since it first debuted in Back in Black Armory, and it's absolutely my favorite exotic primary in Destiny 2. Uh, this thing is to me in Destiny 2 what the Mita was in Destiny 1. I use it constantly and it accounts for more than half of my total kills in Crucible. Now any of you that have used a bow know that it's a very different play style. It's a lot more peak oriented and uh, it, usually you're not going to win many straight up gunfights. Le Monarch changes a lot of this. In my opinion it's probably one of the most versatile exotic primaries that we have in the game just because of all the different things that it can do. Uh, damage wise it does with the poison about 175 on a headshot and roughly 125 on a body shot. This is the single highest burst damage off of any primary or any exotic primary in the Crucible period. Now this doesn't account for buffs and things of that nature, which obviously if you buff Le Monarch with things like Whispers of Hedrons or uh, Charge with Light, things of that nature, it'll one shot. And uh, one of the great things about Le Monarch's damage is if somebody so much as gets tickled in the crucible, let's say it doesn't even have to be a headshot, they just take a little bit of a damage, nine times out of ten you're capable of killing them immediately after that if you land a successful fully charged headshot. And even then, somebody that's below half health, you really don't even need to pull it to full charge. You just need to quickly draw the bow and just release it. And like I said, most of the time it's going to finish them off quite easily. Now the other benefit to Le Monarch's high damage comes to play in light based PvP. Uh, if you're in something like Iron Banner and you're way above someone's light level, or even really not that far above, you can most of the time one-shot them with a fully charged headshot. Uh, the other great thing about it, and this is unique to combat bows versus any other primary in the game, is that they do very well when you're under leveled in these light based PvP game modes. If you're way below someone and you're still pulling off fully charged headshots, you can still down them in two hits. You basically just have to play the game like everyone's in their super and always go for charged headshots, but you'll still be able to do respectable damage and you'll still be able to get your two shot kills. Now, if someone actually pops their super in one of these and you're below them, I would recommend playing smart and just retreating tactically there. And as far as trials is concerned, if you happen to be over leveled, that's great. But don't try to go in there under leveled. It's not going to be fun for you, and you're probably just going to drag your team down with that. The most common tactic that you're going to be using while fighting with Le Monarch is going to be your double peeking. You're going to come to full draw, step out of cover, tag somebody, step back into cover while you're drawing again, step back out, and hopefully finish them off. The number one thing you want to be careful with when you're double peeking is double peeking after you just took a ton of damage. If you peek out, you tag somebody, or miss of course, and they take out anywhere near half of your health or more, do not pop back out. Reset, slide into a different piece of cover, sit for a second and regen. If you're a warlock, throw down a well, whatever you need to do to not peek again and get the easy cleanup happen to you. The last thing you want is to step out repeatedly and keep making the same mistake where you just tag somebody and then you just die to them. Even worse, you don't want to run around and try to come to full draw twice in a row on somebody out in the open. You got to utilize your cover. One of the biggest things you have to learn with bows is weaving in and out of cover and how to use cover effectively during a fight. Now one tactic that I use all the time that I never really see anyone else utilize and have never even heard anybody talk about is a close range insta kill that you can perform with any combat bow. This does not include lightweight bows as they don't have the impact to really do this. However, whenever you get close to somebody you're within melee lunge range, if you come to full draw, release, and then quickly follow with a melee, you will near instantly kill someone. 
This can be especially effective if you also jump up into the air. Now the timing on this can be a little bit more difficult for warlocks and titans as you guys can't hold the draw like a hunter can when you're jumping. But if somebody's coming around the corner with a shotgun or you think somebody's about to slide around the corner with a shotgun, you can quickly jump into the air, come to full draw, and fall right on top of them, release melee, and you'll instantly kill them and usually catch them off guard. Not many people, especially shotgun rushers, are expecting to get instantly bursted down close range by somebody with a bow. Now, on the subject of class differences, that brings me to my next couple points. And that is builds with the Le Monarch and what exotics you can pair with it. Your obvious choice is gonna be the Oath Keepers if you're a hunter. Hands down, this turns Le Monarch into an S tier crucible weapon. The ability to come to full draw and hold it indefinitely while still maintaining that poison is absolutely game changing. You can ready that shot and the moment you see someone you can release it and immediately hit them with that poison, hit them with that burst damage and they're ready for the cleanup. Whether it's you, your teammates or what have you. Now for warlocks and titans, titans you don't really have too many things that pair well with the monarch. You can kind of just wear whatever you want. Um, Warlocks, I would say your best bet is probably going to be the Ophidian Aspects. And the reason for that is whenever you're using Le Monarch, you release the arrow, you can quickly swap to something else because of the Ophidian Aspects effect and go for the easy cleanup. And that brings us to the weapon pairing. If I'm using Le Monarch, most of the time I'm going to be using a sidearm as my backup weapon. Sidearms to me are really good for easy cleanups. If I tag somebody with Le Monarch and they're in my face, I don't have time to duck into cover. There's no way I'm gonna try to get off that second shot. I'm gonna immediately pull out the sidearm for the quick and easy cleanup. The other great thing about a sidearm is if you start getting rushed by someone with a shotgun, an auto rifle, something in close range, rather than you, if you don't already have a shot ready with Le Monarch, you can just pull out the sidearm and immediately start laying into them with the sidearm. And you've got a pretty solid chance of winning that or at the very least putting some damage on them so that someone else can clean them up. Uh, if you're playing with the Ophidian Aspect on the Warlock or the Lucky Pants with the Hunter, you can pair it the Monarch with a good hand cannon. Reason for that is it's, it's almost like a long range version of the melee shot that we were talking about earlier. If you come to full draw, release, hit somebody, and immediately swap to a hand cannon, you can kill them almost instantly. It's also good to make a habit of taking headshots when you see groups of enemies just for the suppressing fire that Le Monarch provides. Whenever that wave of poison goes out, you just spread poison onto everybody and they're all ready for the cleanup. Some of them maybe not as much as the guy that got shot in the head, but I can't tell you how many times I've hit someone in the head standing in a group, the poison spreads to all of them, and then an ally comes in with a super and wipes them all out, and I just got credit for killing all of them. The last bit of advice I have when using Le Monarch is when to go for headshots and when to go for body shots. It's going to take a while to master this, it, you kind of have to get the tempo of it, kind of like learning to weave in and out of cover. But for the most part, when I'm fighting in a 1v1 situation, I don't go for headshots, I just focus on hitting them. It doesn't matter if you hit them in the head, it doesn't matter if you hit them in the body, two arrows are going to put them down. Now, when headshots become important, number one obviously supers. Anytime you see a super, you should try to go for headshots on them. If not, just run away because it's a super. But if they're not really focused on you or if there's enough distance between you and them, you can try to go for the headshots and it will down them into fully charged headshots with the poison, of course. Now, the other couple times you want to go for headshots are, say, an ally has damaged an enemy. You notice that they're missing some health. Go for the headshot. For the most part, it's going to kill them. Unless they're just taking a sliver of damage, any damage at all, a headshot's going to finish them off. And then of course, anytime you've got a group of enemies standing together and you're peak shotting. If you see a couple of people standing together, you hit one person in the head, pop back out, hit the other person in the head. If they've been standing close to each other, the poison will stack across on both of them and both of them will die from a single arrow because of the stacking poison. And with that, that wraps up my tips on Le Monarch. Overall, I think it's a very versatile weapon, if not the most versatile weapon in the game as far as exotic primaries go. There's a lot you can do with it. It has something to offer you at all ranges. 
and I hope I taught you guys some interesting things about it. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.